In the winter of 1996, French-Canadian Manon was a 19-year-old flight attendant who was enjoying travelling and seeing the world. It's not a routine. Every day it's different. We travel a lot in Europe, in Frankfurt, in London. I never want to leave London, I promise. While travelling, she met a flight director called Gio. Manon was a very beautiful young lady with big smile, always having fun. Their relationship developed quickly and it wasn't long before they'd moved in together. I would say it took about a year before we really got involved seriously. Although they were in love, they had no plans to settle down. Gio and I were not talking about kids or buying a house or do anything like that. I know I was taking a pill every day. I was using it since five years before that. In April 1999, Manon felt run down by her hectic lifestyle. Okay. Being a flight attendant, it's a really physical job. Your day, it's pretty close to 16 to 17 hours a day. I was on my feet all day. We help passengers put their bags in the overhead bins. She was a little bit more tired, but maybe it was jet lag because we were flying a lot. That summer, she noticed she'd put on weight. I didn't eat well. Let's have a pizza, a burger. Even Gio gains weight. We had gained both maybe five to seven pounds each because of our lifestyle, you know, restaurants and wine and beer. But my flight attendant's uniform was fitting really well, didn't feel anything change. And I still have my period really regular. If you want them so bad, On the 3rd of August, Manon spent a rare night off relaxing with friends over dinner. I was up maybe for 48 hours because I flew from Hawaii to Vancouver and didn't have a rest. I am so sorry, I think I'm gonna have to go. For me to say I need to go sleep, even though there are some people at my place, it's kind of not really polite, but I knew I need to sleep right now. I'm overtired. When people left, we went to bed, and around one o'clock in the morning, she started having pain. I started feeling my lower body was numb, and I was really scared because I was unable to feel my legs. My legs feel strange. She, she got up and she went to the bathroom and she got sick. I was sweating. I just lay down on the floor because it was like cold. And it was so sudden, that's, that's what was so scary for her and me. It's like, oh my God, man, oh my, what are we gonna do? And when I said, uh, call 911, it was really scared. I think I'm gonna die. Yeah, please. When the paramedics arrive, uh, the lady, she starts asking me some questions. Okay, where's the pain coming from? She says, everything that you're telling me, I'm pretty sure it's uh, kidney stones. Do you think you can stand up? So you're just gonna need to go to the emergency room right now. I actually got to the hospital before the ambulance. I couldn't get into the same place she was being admitted, but I could hear her and she was really crying. Oh, please, please, I need to go to the bathroom. I said to the paramedic, I need to go to the washroom right now. And she says, no, 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 just hold on a second. And I said, no, 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 I, I need to go right now. All of a sudden, it was like water everywhere with a little bit of blood. And I was like, oh my God, what is going on? So the doctor says, my water broke. And she says, oh my God, she's pregnant. And I was like, oh, what did she say? Pregnant? Pregnant? Pregnant, And I didn't even know what the words pregnant meant because I was not that good in English. It, it was the first time I heard that word. And believe me, I will never forget that word. You're gonna have a baby. And I was in shock. It's Unbelievable, it's impossible. I'm gonna have a baby. I am alone in the waiting room and the nurse comes to me. She says, you have to follow me because she's having the baby. Is it the baby? I couldn't believe it, I, I, I thought it was a mistake. They bring me to the maternity level, so that's where Gio 
he came in the elevator and I asked him what is going on. Please don't let me die. I was telling Gio, don't let me die. And I said, no, you're not dying. Don't worry. You're not dying. When we get to the maternity room, the doctor says, okay, now you have to start pushing. So I start pushing and the baby's head just come out. And she said, you need to stop pushing right now because the umbilical cord is around the baby's neck. She removed the umbilical cord and she says, okay, just push. Now just push once. Just push once and the baby would just come out. Like that. When the baby came out, we didn't hear the baby crying or anything. I don't hear anything. <laughs> they cut the cord. They take her to the back room. They took the baby away. I said to myself, is the baby okay? Because we were drinking wine all the time and I didn't take care of myself. I was traveling all around the world. One of the greatest risks of a pregnant flight attendant while she's on the job is the exposure of radiation from the sun to the fetus. It's advised that pregnant women not spend more than 100 hours in their pregnancy in the air. A flight attendant could very easily surpass that in a number of weeks. Radiation is known to cause malformations of the fetus, either in development of its organs or in its outward appearance. Well, I was so scared that she will not be healthy at all. Almost an hour passed by before Manon and Gio were able to see their daughter. Is she all right? She's perfect. <gasps> they came back and says, here's a little girl. Then I was, oh my God, okay, okay. The sound of the baby crying is like a switch that turns something on in my heart. As soon as I hold her in my arms, the connection was there. I said, okay, I'm a mom. She's my daughter, and wow.